Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is Dimpa's Lounge. My name is Odeno Dimpa. Um, today's topic is going to be um, domestic violence and abuses that we have in our homes. Um, when we when the first launch came up, where well, we talked about so many things that comes with the separation, divorce, and everything, and then we realized there's a bit more we have to also tackle because the domestic violence happens in every homes, and then we don't even talk about it. Um, today I have with me here um, Sheila and Faison. Um, I have another person coming in also. And we're going to talk about how we understand that term, um, domestic violence, and what we can do about it. Everyone here, I mean, we, I understand something, somebody understands something. Maybe you understand something as well. Maybe the people you're going to share to or likes as well, they have something. We will have the lines open when you're ready. You can also, I mean, call and then tell us how you feel or what you know about domestic uh, violence. Once again... We are happy to meet you guys again. You're on the hot seat as um, <laughs> Sheila and Faison today. Nice to be here. Basically, we, when we talk about domestic violence, how do we understand it? How, what do we know about domestic violence? Um, I think I'll, I'll take up on that. Um, basically, domestic violence, in a layman's knowledge, is doing things without your will, or somebody imposing something on you to do, without your consent or your will so that's what i understand however it comes there are different aspects of um domestic violence and throughout our discussion we're going to be we think is very prominent in our homes that we are not even aware of yeah that's correct it's pretty much uh, what sheila said um it's the behavior and threatening behavior between the individuals that also happens to be in a relationship um, abusive behavior between that um, there's different sort of obviously abuses it's just not one as we had a discussion earlier not one but many many different types of abuse so um exactly what are the examples how we could say that brings i mean we we, we can put in that domestic violence box we have a few for example the main one i'm going to start off with physical and emotional mm -hmm which has the very main impact on health and on the house, the atmosphere, especially with kids being around. Yeah. Um, emotional and physical will be the main one. It comes with verbal, financial, sexual, and a few more that actually yeah, play their part too. in it. Okay. Um, there, there's also a few more that we, we don't, most of the time we don't classify it as an abuse, but in the whole package of an abuse is also part of it, but it's because we are not aware of it. So we need to know that there are other things such as um, emotional ignorance, even our own family, our own self, we can abuse ourselves in ways that we might not think is an abuse. So we need to look at that as well. I guess you, you meant self-harm. Self-harm, well. yes. And um, alcohol and drug misuse, Substance there are abuse. all sorts of abuse that happens our, in our daily lives. But obviously, because we, we, we've classified abuse as more or less um, domestic violence, which is quite prominent because that's what happens in our homes. However, these other abuses is happening because, but because we are not aware of it, because we are not more educated or because we do not even understand what it means, we take it as, as an ordinary thing. Absolutely. Just because we are more enlightened to the more physical and um, um, sexual and financial abuses. Absolutely. It's correct, I mean, because uh, physical abuse can be, as you said, it's very prominent. So we tend to think that's the only sort of abuse out there. Uh, uh, it's not correct. There's so many different different ways one can be abused or feel abused. Um, as I gave example earlier on, I will take, for example, financial abuse. It doesn't sound much. However, if you start doing it, start controlling somebody's finances, stopping them from spending the way they want, they would like to be, that's an abuse right there. One might not think it is, but it is. It might have some sort of bad impact on someone's health. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's some, one of the hidden sort of side, a gray area where people tend to think it's not, but it's very, very sort of... Does ignorance also play part of it? I think it does. Because when, when we talk about ignorance, it's more or less, you know, you know something, but you're just 
keeping a close eye you just can't be bothered because you are accustomed to doing that thing for example in 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 our modern society where we live sometimes with our stepchildren or our, um, our step parents even and people are not aware that some of these things that we do are actually abuse for example uh, like my colleague said the most common ones that we don't even classify it as an abuse is the um, financial part of it because more or less we know that men are the head of the family so obviously if i'm the woman and i'm working and then at the end of the month my husband is stopping me from you know even buying something small for myself and having a total control over my incomings into the house is a form of an abuse because at the end of the day you is you that have worked for it and therefore as couples or as as a family we need to be able to agree and say actually this is what you've come up with and this is what i've come up with so we need to come together yeah. and you know spend it in a way or manage it with the family however nowadays we see that most people they just literally take the money out of the woman or the man because what i've noticed is when we talk about abuse we focus more on the men but what we don't know is that women can also abuse men it goes hand in hand so we need to understand what is happening in our environment especially in our homes to be able to identify whether this is an abuse or not to your point you said ignorance ignorance yeah very massive part uh, for example i would like to use this for example 130,000 children every year mm -hmm. they they live in the houses where the abuse is happening mm -hmm. and for an average person it takes two to three years before they can get some help i guess that's that answers your question regarding ignorance to how ignorant situations can be while somebody's being abusive or gain abused and it takes them average on average two to three years and that's just an average some mm -hmm. some somebody might be getting abused for like yeah. five six seven yeah. eight ten there are cases out there people were abused for at least ten years and still didn't say anything um so yeah ignorance does play a very and big part do you mm -hmm. think do you think they know that they'll be they themselves being ignorant or the other parties know that the other one is ignorant so i have to use that it's, i think yeah well, i think that the ignorance is sometimes also linked with fear it's not because they are not aware of what is going on it's also the fear that if i tell somebody that this is what is going to, going on in my life i'm going to lose a family member i'm going to lose a husband i'm going to lose a wife so because of that they they put a blind eye and say actually i'm aware of what is happening to me but because i don't want anybody to know because i fear that even if i voice it out people are going to know that this is what is happening in my house so i'm not even going to talk about it at, at all so the person that is actually involved in the abuse is also being ignorant because they've identified it but because they fear that if they bring it out people are going to point fingers and say oh actually so this has been happening to you for years and you never seek help so it's also part of the ignorance bit is also part of fear That's which cool. is which is a big deal because people don't want to voice it out and then they would say that oh actually they've got a beautiful family so how come this is actually happening in the family so yeah so do you do you also think that we're very much aware of it and we become complacent about the whole domestic thing I believe yes. Um, I, I believe so. Yes, that is the way it's going. As Sheila said earlier, ignorance is another part of it. That you, you, you sometimes you know that you gain abuse, but you, you decide not to do anything about it. Um, reasons: fear of losing husband, wife, kids, um, and being complacent to it, getting used to it, fear, living day to day life by it. So it just becomes a norm for you. A normal life becomes that for you. If you've been abused, sometimes you accept that as a real life. Um, so yes, sometimes we do get complacent, we do get uh, comfortable with it and we don't really tend to think that yes, it's something that shouldn't be happening. You take it as a part of the life or you just accept it like, yeah, okay, fair yeah. enough, I got married, got a husband like that for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe it was written my destiny to, to live with a man like that. No, it's not the case. Okay, so um, this is a question that I'm end up popping up in my head. Um, especially from your background, right, what example do you see? Uh, similar uh, in terms of fear, people carry on getting abused when it comes to specific culture. Um, people, wives, sometimes husbands as well, maybe wives more, I would say. 
um, they, they get abused and that carries on for year year and year and year and nothing is done about it. Reason again, same thing, fear, because in that culture, losing a husband, it, it becomes a taboo. And just to avoid that taboo, um, perhaps one woman will be, you know, she will carry on taking that abuse and won't do anything about it. Um, I think looking at the wider perspective, because b because we are more or less close with our husbands and wives, we tend to ignore the family as well. Because, I mean, in some cultures, mother-in-laws and father-in-laws plays Absolutely. an important role in the family. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, say for example, they have cultures where having a male child is a big deal. So as a woman, if you are married into that kind of family and you haven't been able to produce something like that, then it becomes a problem for your in-laws as well. So things like insult, sometimes we see insult to be a normal thing. But then if it's something that is being done every day for a particular reason, then you need to be thinking twice and say, actually, why it should this be because if it's a normal thing then obviously you would say that oh it's normal like we said ignorance you would think that oh this person likes to insult me so i've accepted it mm -hmm. but then have you thought about it in a long-term perspective the emotional impact that is having on you because that's one thing that we always forget we take things for granted and say that everything that happens is normal we believe in the normal than the abnormal because we want life to be easy but then if you look at it in the long term, you need to analyze yourself. Actually, after this person has done this to me, how do I feel emotionally, physically? How do I feel? Do I feel good about myself? Is there something that I need to voice it out so that I can be free? So we, need, we shouldn't focus on just the nuclear family, I would say, like husbands and wives and children. We should also consider the parents as well for both sides. Well, I mean, what about the children? Does it play impact on the children as well? Uh, it does affect the children, certainly. As, as uh, Sheila said, sometimes women is not able to produce what perhaps the in-laws want. Uh, she becomes a target straight away. And produce from, as in? As in like, uh, people love having sons. Mm. Of course, daughters are lovely as well as well as sons. But it's just the mentality that Sheila mentioned earlier uh, at some certain cultures, somewhat in mine as well, that uh, people expect a son first. And then if a woman obviously fails to uh, produce a son, um, it becomes a kind of like cursed. Sometimes mm. the in-laws would say, for example, oh, she's cursed. She's unable to, um, you know, give birth to a son mm. who can take the inheritance of the family forward, if you know what I mean, keep the legacy going. Or maybe first it's a daughter and then they say, okay, maybe next time there will be a son and then doesn't happen. That, that becomes even more cursed yeah. sort of situation for that individual, that, that, that lady in that situation. So yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all ignorance. I would say ignorance is a very, very main point that plays part at different, yeah. different stages. Is it culturally? Yeah, or... um, I think culture plays a very important role when it comes yeah. to any form of abuse. Because from our society, from where we come from, um, we stigmatize a lot. So even if I'm going through domestic abuse, any form of domestic violence, I'm scared to even voice it out because we live in a country where law works. Yeah. So for example, if my husband is abusing me physically and I voice it out and he's cautioned, I'm going to be stigmatized in my community to say that actually she made, she put her husband or wife or whoever in trouble. So we, we, we're talking about being able to ascertain our in in terms of the abuse but the fact that we get stigmatized as well people do get stigmatized even for voicing it out that this is the problem that i'm going through they point fingers so that also brings fear so because of that some people even though they know that they are being abused they just put a blind eye to it because of our cultural reasons that men or women have the right to do their own thing therefore you are not allowed to question whatever is being done to you okay. so we i think it's a big thing that we need to address we need to make people understand that if you're going through an abuse there are so many ways that we can handle it that will still keep your family together that's right so at what level should one i mean report or sat, sit down that i mean to, you should know at a level that Okay, at this point, I can't take it anymore, right? But at what level should we accept it? 
borderline needs to be drawn on this this is something that borderline needs to be drawn on it and to be honest with you any level of abuse is unacceptable uh, it does not matter is acceptable or is it is un- it's not acceptable no. sorry if i <laughs> so yeah, any level of abuse is not acceptable um one should never be settled for any level of abuse uh, one should not be abused in any way shape or form be it any uh, physical mental financial sexual anything uh, regardless of you being partners married or just dating girlfriend boyfriend i.e mm. etc um i my personal belief is no one should settle for any abuse there are no standards for it there's no place for it in society yeah is there anything to add um it's true because like Faison said there's, th- th- we shouldn't even give room Absolutely. for abuse to happen yeah. because at the end of the day we are all individual and we might have our own opinions and beliefs and whatever but abuse is something that we need to th- there should be a thin line you should know your limits because sometimes we we become so ignorant that certain things we don't take it serious so abuse is something that shouldn't even happen at all but then the question is how do people draw the line to say that this can be classified as an abuse it's hard to understand it's hard to understand you know at what point like you asked at what point should i call this as an abuse abuse. which is what we need to educate people on because because we 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 are so normalized with things we think that whatever happens is normal but then if you really don't understand and you don't have knowledge about it or you are not into it how would you know that actually the extent that is happening is an abuse that's correct which is something that we need to address because obviously not everybody is enlightened or is educated or reads or know anything to be able to differentiate between what is an abuse and what is not Right. So, who is more likely to abuse you? Um, well, it depends who you <laughs> means. Um, in terms of, I mean, in relationships mainly, yeah. the one we spoke about the most today. In relationships, of course, your partner, I would say. Mm. And if it's kids involved, then it has it could be a step parent. It could m- many cases could be a real parent. Mm. I mean, some there are cases out there. Yeah. Um, so it depends who you actually mean by who you are and what your position is in the family. Um, majority um, is it comes from women. Women have reported more than men, mm. and the the rate of uh, abuse reports uh, women have reported more than men. Which means, of course, there is more abuse from men mm. towards women. Yeah. It's just the numbers pl- obviously explain themselves. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, depending who you are, some something around your family on the structure in the house, and yeah, the the domestic abuse plays its part. So, do people use their power? I mean, should I say the politicians, pastors, I mean, leaders, mm. do they use their power um, to abuse or when it's being reported to them, they just, I mean, cover could, up, uh, you mean? Yeah, yeah, and put on the carpet. Um, it depends. It depends where you are because I believe in the United Kingdom where we live domestic abuse or domestic violence is something that they don't give room for it so the fact that people have we, they, they, we, they always want us to advocate so that people can voice it out and then they'll be able to help them but it's rather unfortunate that it's not every it's not everywhere that you are that has the the, the, the capacity or the will to help people so it depends where where you are having said that we are not saying that if you live in the other part of the world and you're being abused you can't get help there are so many helps available that when you open up to people they will direct you to the right place so the fact that people have power i don't think they should necessarily put a blind eye when there's there's an obvious abuse going on Unless that person is accustomed to taking everything as an abuse, obviously, which people do because they do take anything as an abuse, more or less. But then if it's it's really an abuse, then people should be able to voice it out. And when you, the person that is in power, you're being informed of what is going on, you don't have to sit on it. You need to action on it because it's through the action that we'll be able to help the person. Because like we said... Abuse has so many implications on our daily lives that we are not even aware of. 
Do you understand? Mm. So if you don't address it at the early stages, and then you're being told and you think, oh, you have the power, so you choose which case you should handle, then obviously it's wrong. That's correct. It's wrong. Adding to what Sheila said, um, single parenting, I guess, another is another mm. branch yeah. of uh, covering upside that you que just questioned. Um, you know, 67, 68% of single parents, they work out of 100. Mm -hmm. And when a job gets involved, that means your kid needs some sort of babysitting. In some cases, it's a babysitter. In some cases, it's your partner or, or step parent to the baby. Um, that's again, uh, if, if i.e. they're abusing the kid um, and kind of covering it up. So yes, power does play its part. So power doesn't mean, as you said, power doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you have to be a minister or some sort of uh, yeah. and powerful position to abuse your power. Power comes if a mother left her child to you until 2 p.m. Mm. I guess you're in power. Yeah. You, you can very much abuse the kid. You can very, very much take care of the kid. You're in power. So again, saying that, absolutely power plays its part in terms of covering up or putting it under the blanket, as you said. Yeah. So when... When does I want to hear? I want to know about this again. Where does one settle for it? Because it looks like you know, I mean, doing this, um, um, just doing the questions on this program, I realize there's so much, there's so much to do with um, um, domestic violence that we we're not even aware mm. of, because we uh, we just think it's normal, but um, we just our day-to-day, -day, as she was said, right, it's a day-to-day -day thing and we, we just take it as it's, it's normal so we don't have to report it. Or I, don't, I mean, until when I was search, researching for this and I got to know there's so many things that we do as a human mm -hmm. that we're using it against or to, I mean, as a violent, but we're not even aware of it. Mm -hmm. So in this case, why, how do you educate somebody who you know that they've been influenced well, and before I come to that, let's welcome our uh, lovely sister. She's late, but we're going to take it as she's here. Our lovely Liz. Oh, welcome hello, everybody. To, welcome. Um, and we have uh, Faison, we have Sheila here. And hello, lovely to meet you. Lovely yeah, we'll, meet. I must apologize for being late. Uh, it's not, it doesn't thousands. happen. Normally, she's here about so an hour before program, but yeah. I mean, we take it. So we're lovely talking, we're talking about the um, domestic violence. Mm. Where and how does one settle? Mm -hmm. I mean, at what level should one, I mean, settle for domestic violence? And also, I mean, the things, the terms that we know mm -hmm. about domestic violence, especially you coming into work now, right? Mm -hmm. I should take it as domestic violence <laughs> because you use some of our time. Right? Yeah. We've been sitting here waiting. Be so, so there are so many things that we do and we're not aware of it. Mm. At the moment, we're going to the part that we want to know about are the leaders or the pastors politicians i mean i mean are heirs of the house or anywhere mm. do they use their power mm -hmm. um, um yeah go, go ahead right um domestic violence very very touchy subject um, yeah. there's so many contributing factors um the person who's committing that kind of or violating the other person's space I'm not here to judge or make whatever, but that there are so many contributing factors. Mm -hmm. Some could be a financial problem at home. It could be someone with anger issues. Um, it could be something that hasn't been dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously when things are left dormant, it can kind of, it's like growing something. If you put a seed down and it, you know, if you don't water, it's not gonna grow. I'm trying to make a point here. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would say, particularly, and I'm going to actually turn this around a little bit, and the reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of women go through DV, mm. um, and I think statistically, there's more women that probably been gone, mm. going through damage than, than men. Mm. However, there are men who also go through DV, yeah. but don't talk about it, which can have a detrimental effect on the individual. Mm. Now, I don't know whose question, I'm not deviating from it, I will come back to that. Mm. In terms of the churches, the pastors, um, certain cultures don't if you look at it as yeah. DV they just think I mean I can well, talk yeah. from my own experience yeah. That's right. yeah. I'm from a Ghanaian background and when I was going through my issues in terms of DV I was advised by my parents it's all right who stop you know it's just yeah. a phase he's going through at the moment 
Um, I've got Asian friends who mm. go through DV, they're not allowed to divorce their husbands. Mm. So these kind of things, if we don't kind of deal with them, yeah. on the onset, it becomes mm. a certain issue. And I mean, sometimes it can lead to crime mm. in the sense that person could harm the other one so much that, I mean, we know of Claire's law. I don't know, mm. kept complaining, complaining that look, yeah. this man is being violent, violent, and nothing was done. And again, until she, she lost her life mm. is when things were done. But churches are not doing what they should be doing. Instead of standing there and preaching about mm -hmm. how fruitful you are, you can have beautiful house and properties and things, mm -hmm. we should be preaching about things like this. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to even like, I don't know, in the Islam or wherever mm -hmm. it is, I'm sure that, you know, we have to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. And talking about them being open mm -hmm. is how we can learn and educate ourselves and go forward. Uh, so mm -hmm. I asked a question. Mm -hmm. so I think, I, I think mm -hmm. um, Dimpa, sorry to cut yes, you off, but from what um, mm -hmm. our sister said, mm -hmm. even, Power, we, 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 we've been talking about if power has an influence mm -hmm. in um, um, covering up domestic mm -hmm. violence. Even in our churches, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. no pastor would want to talk about it because mm -hmm. they don't want to lose their congregation. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, I'm in a church and I've, I've noted some form of mm -hmm. a trend mm -hmm. that I think is, is having a, an impact mm -hmm. on, my, on my emotional life mm -hmm. or in my life mm -hmm. and then I go forward and say to my pastor actually this is what I've noticed mm -hmm. is it possible that you can have a word with my husband mm -hmm. or my wife mm -hmm. we, we don't have a specific statistics but from where we come from we, I, can, I can boldly say that it's about one in a hundred pastors that will take this up because at the end of the day they, don't, they will tell you they don't want to interfere mm -hmm. but having said that they don't want to lose their congregation as well so they cover it up mm -hmm. and then it, it goes on and on and know. on and on and on until something drastic has happened then but, they realize yeah. that mm -hmm. they, you, you've been betrayed but even in our community something drastic don't happen in terms of someone losing their life mm -hmm. what happens is the mental health side of it. Issues. It's a repercussion of it. Mm. Because I don't know, I don't know any statistic back from, let's say, for example, Ghana, mm. that says someone beat up their wife and mm. they died. I, mm. I don't have no statistics like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, or even vice versa. Mm. But what I can say is the mental health issue that it has on that, us. It does happen though. It, it does it, happen. It probably, um, yeah. I But I mean, the, the, mm. the emotional side mm. is, yeah. is, is more and greater. Mm. But we don't realise how or what level we should. Mm. Because we think, oh, it's okay. So, like you said, mm. oh, okay, maybe he's upset, so he's he'll not. come around. Mm. They don't know on the opposite side, of the world, mm. and they, they always, especially if you go to, uh, let me ask a question: mm. Who do you go to mm -hmm. when you have domestic domestic issues? If you don't want to go to the government, who mm. do you go to? I, um, from my little understanding, it, it, there has to be. A mutual agreement between whoever the abuse abuse is happening mm. you understand because some people think that if I'm if I'm being abused in my own home I have to confront a pastor or a minister or mm. whoever you the individual should be able to identify and say actually the extent that my partner is doing to me mm. I think it's about time that we sit and talk about it mm. so if you talk about it and it doesn't end. <clears throat> mm. That's when you escalate it. Yeah. Because like, like we, there are certain things that we do that we think is normal. Yeah. So unless you are more educated about what domestic abuse is all about, mm -hmm. there are certain things that you would think is normal. Absolutely. You yeah. understand? Mm. So for me, I think it's it's very important that we let our partners know, or our family members, or the people that are the individuals that are involved in the abuse know that actually this is not normal mm -hmm. this has continued for a while yeah it's about time that i sit my partner down i sit my mom down my dad down and we talk about it and if it doesn't work and it continues then obviously you would escalate it but to be honest with you i'm just sort of coming in there <clears throat> dv is not um it's not specifically a hit mm -hmm. a push a shove mm -hmm. an emotional verbal abuse these little things are part of what DV is. Mm. But I think sometimes we look at it as he slapped me mm. or she slapped me. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's more than that. Yeah. Someone's saying to you constantly, mm. you're fat, mm. 
mm. you're ugly, mm. you're this. It's all part of DV. Yeah. It builds up. So I don't think we should wait till we're hit or slap before mm. we get that help. Yeah. On the onset with certain words that doesn't sit right. Mm. If you're with your partner and they say certain words that doesn't make you feel comfortable, mm. that's the time you use, actually, I don't like that. Yeah. And you move on from there. Because otherwise it carries on. Mm. And before you know, it's a push. Then it's a shove. Mm. And it's a slap. And it's a punch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I think before you came, we were mm. kind of touching up on, touching up on yeah. that yeah. Yeah. because we we more or less mm. have categorized abuse to be slapping, mm-hmm. insults. Mm-hmm. But there are other things that mm. we actually mentioned that ignorance mm-hmm. is part of an abuse. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, you understand. Mm. So we we need to let the public mm. know that actually abuse is not just hitting mm-hmm. or it's not just name calling mm. there are other things as well mm-hmm. that we need to consider we need to we need to address or we need to see to it that is there a trend in this thing mm-hmm. do i need to talk about it do i need to seek help because like you said most people know that it's only when a man or a woman hates you mm. that's an abuse but some people don't even know that our own partners or our own family or relatives or even children. can can well, abuse us financially. Can, can abuse us financially. Absolutely. Most people don't know. They think mm. it's a normal thing to mm. do. Mm. For example, if I work and at the end of the month my husband comes to me and say, You earn one thousand five hundred, give me thousand mm. pounds. The five hundred pounds that is left. Buy food stuff, pay bills, do this, do that, and you can't even get a penny for yourself mm-hmm. for me it's a form of an abuse yes Absolutely. because mm. and these are the things that we don't know mm. like you said we wait for it to build up until we've been hit by the person mm. that's when we classify it as an abuse so i think we need to let people know that abuse is not just about being hit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's about the other things as well it's much more that, than that we don't know Absolutely. and may i add this uh, I guess uh, since sister arrived, mm. uh, I was saying that the culture also, the background where you come from, mm. um, for example, I'm from a Pakistani background, yeah. and cultural we're pretty much the same. Mm. Yeah. Um, things that are norm in United Kingdom might not be norm there, or things that are norm there might not be here. Mm-hmm. Here, if you um, physically slap your wife or husband, they can certainly report you. They have the awareness, they have yeah. the knowledge of reporting. Absolutely. Back home, and I'm going to include my yes, back sir. home and your back mm-hmm. home, things like that occur. And, and the poor woman doesn't even know what to say. She mm-hmm. thinks, yeah, that's my man and that's what I get from him. Be a slap or be a punch or be anything else or swear. Whereas in this country, it's all about awareness. Mm. The more the awareness, obviously, the more we can avoid this. Yeah. Women's back home, again, both, both of us, back, um, I mean, they don't even know what to do. Very it true. comes down to the awareness yeah. side Very of it. True. Because true. I know that where, where we're from, mm. I mean, in the past, your mum, your dad, and then the other side of the family, mm. their mum, their dad, they'll all sit together. That's yes. correct. And then they try to resolve these problems. Yeah, that's right. And then it's all brushed under the carpet. That's right. Yeah. So it's all right, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Dad did it to me. Yeah. I'm still here. He's your you man. Know? He's so your man. You know, you can't man. leave. Yeah. You know, you're going to shame the family. Yeah, exactly. And you yeah. just stay, 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 stay. But example, if I have to go back to myself, it just got to a point I thought, I can't live like this anymore. Mm. You see that his way or my, my way, way. Mm. or one of us hit the highway yeah. that's right you know? yeah. and i was gone and i've never looked back yeah. i'm glad i made that decision yeah. and i'd like to actually say to anyone who's watching this program who may be going through dv mm. don't sit there hoping mm. that the person's one day is going to get up and change because if that's the way they are that's the way they are mm. and they don't change that's correct you know one may say what about therapy i mean there's therapy there's all sorts it could help someone but, but you yeah. know what what once you live with somebody and they show you that character on the onset you know what my sister my brother particularly the men that don't speak about dv mm. put your bag behind your back on your rucksack or pick your rucksack and literally head towards that door mm-hmm. one might think oh are you encouraging divorces but should i also stay and get killed well, right. we'll come back to that um to everyone that's watching us from the first lounge um the line the phone lines are open now mm-hmm. the number is 0794434 um you could call in with your contribution and your questions as well um at the end of the day we're going to put down the numbers to call if you have any issue and if you don't want to even talk to us the national helpline numbers is also there we're going to talk to you about it mm-hmm. so if you want to call in now the number is 07944 Three four six zero two eight. Mm. So mm-hmm. we come back to this. Um, 
we there was some statistics that we saw on the uh, I saw on the on the on the website regarding uh, uh, DV, mm -hmm. and at what age, and at what kind of what um what kind of person would that, I mean DV will happen to most of the times or at what age do we see this? To be honest with you, I would say once, if we're talking about. Because let's also remember that it's not just in relationships mm. that DV happens. Mm. Your children could be abusive. Mm. And I think sometimes even as parents, we think because we've given birth to that child, it's okay mm. for them to walk over you, to talk about financial things, for them to... Some kids will hit their parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Some children will literally hit their parents. That's also domestic violence. You know, let's get real here and stop thinking that it's just in relationships and marriages. Mm. And no parent should stand for your child to hit you or slap you. It's a form of abuse. Yeah. So what age? I can say from the minute that person can push, shove and hit. Mm. 16, 14. Absolutely. You know, I think it, 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 it just, it's not necessarily 48 plus. It can happen from a very young yeah, age. Yeah. You can't catch very, that's, what, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to yeah. say. <laughs> from my background mm. and what I know about domestic violence, it starts the minute you're born. Absolutely. Mm. Because, I mean, we're humans and we all take things differently. I think abuse starts the minute you take your breath. Mm. It starts. Mm. So it's up to that individual when they are able to speak up, to voice out so that they can get help. Because at the moment, we are not advocating that people should start reporting their husbands, their children, or what. We're just creating an awareness mm. for people to know that DV is real. It's out there. It's out but it's because we are not paying attention to it. And we think it's a normal thing for a husband to take all your money, for your child to raise their voice or slap you or whatever. That's not, what, that's not the point you are trying to make. The point you are trying to make is that domestic violence is out there. Mm. So we are just helping people to understand, to have an idea okay. as to what point do I see this mm. as an abuse mm. and when do I seek help? Well, let's go back to the statistics that mm. Dean Pa was asking because there's a report here for 2017, I think it was on the national statistics. Just get that word out. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Well, an estimated 1.9 million adults yeah. from the age of 16 to 59 that's right, yeah. experienced DV in the last year. Yeah. This is only last year. Yeah. We, you know, we're right sort of towards the, the end of the, this year. And according to the year and in 2017, I've already said that. And this survey was done by Crime Survey for England. This is very alarming. Yeah. Really alarming. Very and alarming. remember, these are the only ones that have been reported. Mm -hmm. yeah. For the ones that are not reported, we don't are, know. What, in a year? In a year. In a year. That is bad. Very Seriously. Bad. It is. We need to control our anger. We need to control the way we feel. There are pressures in England. Pakistan is very relaxed, mm -hmm. isn't it? Same in Ghana. It's a very relaxed country. Yes, yeah. mm. But in this country, there's so many pressures. There's that, that you're going to work, your wife's mm -hmm. going to work, the children are frustrating you. Sometimes you, you just get so angry that you feel, but it, that's not yeah. the way. It's not the way to do it. You know, before you, and this is a, like some kind of advice for someone who's watching this. If you're female and you're slapping your partner left, right and centre, please think twice before you do it. Yeah. Because my main concern, as much as I went through as a woman with DV, my main concern is when the men don't talk about it. Mm. And sometimes, they, you know, I mean, I know of an incident where I used to work somewhere and the young bloke said, look, I've been beaten up by my wife. In fact, I laughed. Yeah. Look, come off it. Yeah. It's like six foot five, yeah. big butch guy. He said, because I can't hit her back. And I've been beaten by my wife for the last 10 years I've been married. And he said, a typical example, you're laughing. Who am yeah. I going to go to? Yeah. He said, even if I call the police, I don't even there think. There are more chances mm. that he will get into yeah. the trouble exactly. really. yeah. You know, so it, it's really serious, particularly for the men. Mm. Speak and talk to your friends. And again, maybe report it if you have to. Yeah. It is a crime. Yeah. We all know that. You know? Basically, it's not. It's not just. I mean, we we'll go back to the statistics, mm. as you said. But it's not just from the sixteen. Mm. People get it at a young age, as young you said. Yeah. So yeah. the statistics yeah. is not helping the whole. It's not covering all. So that one, one you said one point, one point nine million adults. So one point nine yeah. adults. Right. Mm. I mean, what How about what about yeah. the, the, the children, the children below the age of sixteen? Yeah. Yeah, children. it would be interesting yeah. to know actually, because mm. we see a lot of young children. Mm. Under the age of sixteen, being abused. You heard of case of baby B a few years ago. Yeah, he was yeah. abused and yeah. hung and beaten yeah. up and burns, yeah. bones broken yeah. and everything. 
that's the example right there. He wasn't even five. He was mm-hmm. exactly. three years old. Yeah. Yeah. And that one is not recorded as well. No, exactly. Because it's a 16 Absolutely. to 59. Yeah. So it'll be very interesting to yeah. know. Yeah, I think maybe this, yeah. um, this sort of survey was done predominantly for adults. Yeah. So perhaps yeah, if we right. look at children yeah. one, we might see yeah. some and, numbers and, there. And yeah. But Scary because um, from the age of 16, mm. we, we, we deem you as... You have the capacity yeah. mm-hmm. to make decisions, so basically, yeah. probably that's why they did the, the survey from that. From that age, yeah. Yeah, from yeah. that age. Yeah, so... Mm. Um, we're still here waiting for the phone calls. If anyone wants to call in with your contribution, the number is 79 um, The phone lines are still open. And we ask... Sisters and brother here, we're here to at least help out because there's so much that's going on within our communities. We culturally, you know, you and I know. I mean, from I from America, from Ghana, from Africa, from India, from Australia, everywhere in this world, even in our homes, it starts from there. And we don't even we don't even report it. As Lizzie says, I mean, when you tell your friend, what are you going to tell your friend anyway? Is are they going to take you serious? So from today, from this program, from now, at least you know that there's a law. I mean, the phone lines for um, uh, National Domestic Helpline is 0808-2000-247. I mean, you could call them. If you, you, can, you can do, I mean, privately, you, they, they won't, they're not going to tell anyone mm-hmm. and they're not going to make sure anyone, I mean, if you don't understand, just call them. Or you can go on the website on Google, YouTube and see how it happens and where you can report all these cases. Because, um, as I always say that, in 2008, we're not going to sit down and wait for things that we've been doing in 2017 going down. We're going up. Our children are growing up. They see exactly what's going on within us. Mm. If families are not happy, if my parents are not happy, the children obviously are not going to be happy also. And if you are a father, especially if you are a father, or if you are abuser, mm. and you're doing this right, let's not forget, you will have a children in the house or one way or the other. There's somebody else sitting there watching you, listening to what you're doing, and they're also going to carry up because you made it easy yeah. so they're going to continue as well um to that, I, can yeah. i just very yeah. quickly very yeah. small point here as you were mentioning mm. that if you're a father you're abusing of course that's not right um there's something i would like to add there that there's a lot of cases of a lot of mothers um, after divorce coming mm. back to the same single parenting again mm. um they don't allow the access the father's the access to the kid. Mm. That's another card that gets played a lot. Yeah. Uh, you must have seen that, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 A lot of yeah. a lot of females do tend to mm. play that card of not laying the access, you know, to the father, a biological father, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing that, that needs to be looked at. Uh, it's, it has impacts on the kid. Mm. I mean, I guess there's nobody can be a best upbringer than your own biological father. Absolutely. No one else will be able um, to. Not necessarily. No, not, yeah. not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. But the best option, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm not. Putting a yeah. line, drawing a line yeah. there, but I would say mm. the best option would be mm. your, your own biological father who have that sort of birth mm. or sort of feeling for you. Yeah. But I however, think it's, a really, it's a really good point. However, sometimes what contributed to the divorce in the first place mm. may have been a rubbish husband. Absolutely. I mean, sorry, Absolutely. I'm no, no, or oh, rubbish sure. wife. Oh, rubbish wife. <laughs> Either yeah, way, wife is quite good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the yeah. times, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we're talking about, you know, you're talking best about right, absent yeah. fathers, yeah. yeah. And, and, um, I, I, I agree with you, you know, hypothetically Do you think speaking. this is fair, if, mm. even if, it's, a, it's just an example question, mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. would it be fair, um, a bad father, let's say for an example, mm-hmm. not to be given the access to the kids? I think from what Lizzie said, it depends what you call it depends a bad father. Yeah, what right. you call a bad father. Because if it's abusive, then there's no way. I'm out. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And I agree with yeah, that. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So if, if, if you have abused me mm. physically, mentally absolutely emotionally no chance. financially yeah. name all the abuses yeah. i don't think me personally i would let you close to my children because what we don't know is that children learn from us absolutely even in our um, in our own homes whatever that we do watch them close doors they imitate what we do so if your husband is punching you or your wife is punching you every day they're going to follow suit yeah. mm. And it's something that we, we are not aware of, but it's happening. Any child or anybody that has a history of family abuse tends to abuse as well. Yeah, it becomes the yeah. replication of it. Becomes the replication of it, yeah. exactly. So 
if there is some sort of abuse in the family, believe you me, it will continue. So I think, to be fair, um, I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't say that I would stop the father. Mm. It is painful. Mm. It is really painful and it can have a detrimental effect mm. on one to the extent that, look, I know some people that take their own lives. Absolutely, mm. yeah. It, it can be yeah. really serious. It goes as bad as that. It goes as bad yeah. as that. But I think from a different point of view, I wouldn't stop the child because mm. the child, the father hasn't abused the child mm -hmm. yeah. in that sense. Mm. I wouldn't, but I have my own reservations. That's mm. right. Because stopping the child sometimes mm. isn't the answer mm. to it. Just because I went through it doesn't mean that the child doesn't have the um, opportunity to meet, to, to yeah. meet the father. Mm. So as painful as it is for some parents, you know, sometimes we've got to give leeway unless mm. the child was also Abuse, Dennis, yeah. and of course, yeah. yeah, that's right. In that sense, yeah. Now, now go back to the what he he asked. Um, when you look at it in so many ways, so many ways, i.e., DV or I mean cheating. Mm. Most, I mean, most women, mm. you feel like okay, I'm in control. So if I decide, listen, if I decide, mm -hmm. because maybe it won't be the. Um, um, cheating or DV or it, it won't be anything else. You decided you're not happy in the marriage again and you are mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. And when they go, right, they take the children with them and also try to stop the fathers from seeing their own children. Now, should I ask that question? Is that also a DV? And also, is it a DV to you as a person, to the husband or the ex-husband or to the child? I think it's an emotional. emotional. It's, it's an emotional sort of impact, but my, I wouldn't classify it as a D. No, I wouldn't. I no, wouldn't. I wouldn't. But my take mm -hmm. on that is, why are you stopping him yeah. for seeing the child? And also, if he's cheated on you, mm -hmm. I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. It's wrong to cheat. Yeah. But people do it. Yeah. I mean, I've been told, look, cheating goes back to Henry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's yeah. True. They, they, they do it, and it can't be stopped. Women do it. Men, men do, do it. it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's it's not right to use it as, look, my husband cheated on me. And because I'm not going to let you see, no, that, that's just, that's, that's a yeah. bit, it's not right to, to do that. It's not a form of DV, I don't think. I think it's an emotional um, oh, impact. It's, it's, it's more, it's, of it's more or less like a payback. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You don't have the right to so see my children. So why do you say it's now? Because mm -hmm. that's also to the child. Mm -hmm. As, the question before mm -hmm. was people in power. Mm -hmm. So when you have that child, you become power. Yeah. So the child becomes powerless. Well, you decide. Oh, I see. You mean on the child? On the child, child. yeah. Mm. It's, 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 a it's a very it's a difficult area, yeah, question. Right, yeah. it's, it's a, a very difficult one. question, and we don't want to give any like false answers or mm. tell people what we haven't seen research mm. being done about it. Yeah. I think, like Lizzie said, it comes down to the individual that is involved, mm. because if if I, if I've left my marriage, and I didn't leave it because it was a domestic violence or I just left it because I felt like it wasn't working and mm. I left the marriage. I don't see a reason to stop my ex-partner seeing the children. Mm. 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 You understand? Having said that, we cannot sit here and say that in a way is an abuse to the children. It can have an emotional It can have an impact. impact. Upbringing. Yeah. But, then, in terms of... but then most often when, when there's a divorce, Women do get the children. Is is mm. is right. is about one in a hundred where they will mm. give the, the children yeah. to the men. Mm. It's what we the women tell the kids as well. You which, understand? Which again is wrong. That's which again most, is most wrong. Emotional. So most going back to what Lizzie yeah. said, so to the emotional, child, emotional. Yeah. Yes, black they can suffer the some kind of emotional, you know, mm. problems uh, or you know. So it, it it's a very tough question. Tough to, yeah. to, but it, but to, it's a good question because mm. then I think. People that are watching have to think about that, and yeah. that's why the phones are open. The phone yeah. lines are open. Ring yeah. with, with um, absolutely. You yeah. might someone out there yeah. might have Those have experienced that, and they can even tell us Share how us. they dealt with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah but um, also um, anyway, the phone lines are still open. Mm. We've got around about ten minutes more to go, and um, the number if you're calling from outside is zero zero four four seven nine four four three four six zero two eight. You can also send us a WhatsApp or text message and then we'll, we'll also read it out for you as well. Um, come back to what we were saying again. Um, with the children, when there's a, um, a DV going on, 
is it a help to the children or we destroy them? We all know it's a destroyer to the children, but how do we destroy the children? Okay, words. Words yeah. are very, very, very powerful. Yeah. Words are very powerful. A child that goes to school with so much anger, bursting out, who's ready to hit, who's ready to fight, who's ready to abuse, mm. wasn't born like that. Mm. It's what goes on in the home. In the home. And whatever goes on in the children learn. Yeah. So words are very, very powerful. And I'd like to say to the old, to the people watching, that don't think you can call, you know, your kids or your husband certain names mm. and think that's where it stays. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, you don't have to hit, punch, and slap me mm. for it to have an effect on me. Emotional abuse is worse than physical. A slap, two, three minutes, you might rub it off and, yeah. and get over the pain. When someone's constantly telling you... Is it acceptable though? No way. Okay. No acceptable. way is it acceptable. Well, sure. It's not acceptable in any shape or form at all. But the worst people we use sometimes mm. to say certain things yeah. can have a serious yeah. impact on one. Yeah. And if we're looking at mental health statistics, mm. you'll be shocked. shocked. When you go to Springfield Hospital, yes. one ward full of women, yeah. all sorts of things that have gone, gone on. But words are very powerful. So going back to your question, a child... You know who would probably experience the impact suffers more, suffers more. Mm. and like um my sister said some of them grow up that's all they know mm. that's all they've that's seen all they've that's seen. all they've seen absolutely yeah. so yeah. i'm also going to get married one day if my wife or husband is no more to slap my wife let me just go yeah. for it you know and that's not acceptable in any shape or form and i just wish that anyone that's watching if you're going through this don't think don't think that it's it's, it's acceptable because it isn't Mm. And it's okay to talk about these things. Dimper's giving the number to ring is anonymous. Mm. Yeah. If you ring, you know, the Samaritans or the, the domestic abuse line, you know, there's no way that they're going to pick up the phone and tell your mum that, hang on, so and so's running here. Yeah. Or tell your what It's yeah. all about confidentiality. And honestly, get out if it's that bad. Leave because it doesn't get any better. Mm. Particularly if it's really violent. I mean, a lot of people think that, look, one day I'm going to get up and she's going to change. Mm. Or he's going to change. And 14 years, it never got better for me. Mm. So, no. seven women a month, very quick one. I'm mm. going to drop in the middle. Absolutely. Seven seven women a month yeah. are dead because mm -hmm. of their current or yeah. ex partners being yeah. abusive towards them. Absolutely. And then that's seven a month. I mean, you can yeah. all you can do is multiply and then see how many a year and yeah. how many in 10 years. And also, just to add to that, it doesn't matter what your kind of status may be or what yeah. professional background. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You've got lawyers, doctors, solicitors, people are going through this. Mm. And sometimes, because of culturally where we come from, we tend to kind of think, well, hang on a minute, I'm a doctor. Mm. If my wife's beating me up, how can I talk how about can it? I talk about it? You know, I'm a lawyer. If my wife is punching me left, right and centre, mm. how can I talk about this? And the men watching, I'm on your side, by the way, yeah. as in report it. <laughs> Don't suffer in silence. Yeah. So, um, culturally, if I come back to you yeah. now, um, what are the examples that, I mean, you've experienced, not personally, yeah. I mean, once you know, I mean, can you give us... What sort of examples yeah. are you particularly asking? Yeah. Yeah. What, what sort uh, of with examples? The, with the domestic violence. Yeah, uh, saying it's, it's, it's a cultural thing, as I said earlier, the certain things are known back home, but they're not here. Mm. Um, things inclusive in abuse, like husband slapping the wife or beating up the kids. For, for wrongdoings or anything mm. like that. Things, those are the things that we cannot do in this country. That's why I was pushing on awareness more than anything. Because mm. once the awareness is out, when somebody knows what to do in certain situation, okay, stay to, stick with abuse. Mm. When a woman knows or a guy knows what to do when he's or she's been abused, I think that that's the door out. I mean, if when somebody knows what to do, mm. that's the way out and then you need to know that. Mm. And these... Yeah, and I think because, um, obviously, Dean Pat's lounge is worldwide. Mm. So, no matter where you come from, yeah. Yeah. you know, I mean, I know certain countries, women are not even allowed to speak. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not even allowed you to You asked me that question, mm. culturally, yeah. even in, yeah, yeah, back home, it's certain places, absolutely. Forced marriages are happening. Yeah. People tend to think in, it's an Islamic thing, it's mm. not, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can't mix the religion with the culture, yeah. it's something. The culture is what we tend to absolutely. make. Absolutely. What we think is not, it becomes a culture. Mm. If a slapping is okay in certain, for, for example, village, mm. uh, they will say, yeah, it's a culture here, man. Everybody does it, it's fine. Mm. Yeah. Don't worry mm. about it. Mm. Or, or sometimes what you get is, do you know what? Mine's worse, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah, and then it makes you feel better. Yeah, you haven't seen yeah. mine yet, you know? <laughs> oh, actually, and it, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think we did mention um, stigma as well. Because mm -hmm. yes. when you look at the, the, the prevalence of DV, mm -hmm. especially from the part where we come from, 
is the stigma mm. because nobody wants to betray mm. their partner That's right. mm -hmm. so the moment you are bold enough to say that actually this is what is happening mm. you are tagged absolutely you understand absolutely so we need to let people know that there's no harm in seeking for help and that that is what the person lounge is all about mm. is the awareness making people understand there are so many help out there if you don't want to talk to a friend you don't want anybody to know what you're going through they've got phone lines that you can call and it's anonymous That's the national it's idea. private yeah. and confidential i think sometimes as well is the fear you know people yeah. feel like the fear of maybe you've got a husband who's the head of the family mm. who's bringing in the income yeah. who's making you know everything looks brilliant on yeah. the outside and you're fearful of leaving because mm. to go and start all over again somewhere else with nothing yeah can be can be a big fear mm. for someone you know coming out of that comfort zone mm. and also vice versa maybe the wife is the head of the family in terms of financially mm. she's supporting the home mm. and you think well actually if i leave them what but it's okay to leave yeah. i left yeah right, well, and my life has been yeah. amazing that's right we've got yeah. i've got one question from one of our viewers saying that the numbers should be rolled out again mm. um inside the uk it's zero zero four four seven nine four four three four six zero two eight and it's easier if you're calling from london it's zero seven nine four four three four six zero two eight so um we, we come back to the question about um us us or come i asked you about culturally is it is it okay or do you think because i mean when you mention you mentioned something that touches me about mm -hmm. i mean um forced marriages and stuff how do we stop that? Because it's still happening. Absolutely. And it's not just culturally from one side. It's mm. er everywhere. They might not do it. Uh, in, they might not do it. People, people do it. sorry to say, you're like using you, that people mm. will say, oh, because of where your background yeah. is. It's not just that. Mm. Because I know, especially in Ghana, it does happen. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Yes. Absolutely, yeah, yes. of course. You understand? It's so, happening yeah. worldwide and, in certain How places. do we deal with these issues? Or if you know any or anyone going to, especially with the DV issue, can you approach them and talk mm. to them about what's going on? Because sometimes if you're not careful, you'll be punching yeah. in, in, in a way that the person will say, no, mind your own business. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Especially back yeah. home, as you so said. How do, we, how do we deal with these issues? Right. How do we deal with these issues? Do you know what? If I had a friend who came up to me and said, you know what, I'm being abused, mm. left, right and centre, whether it's male or female, I would try to help them by saying, look, go, go to the body yeah. that can support you. Yeah. I know in Africa, even in Africa, there's, I mean, I think, you know, in Ghana, for example, yeah. domestic violence not accepted. Mm -hmm. Years ago, probably, but not now. I mean, now, if you beat your wife left, right, and centre, or vice versa, there is laws in place yeah. that, that, that covers you. Mm. So the way to deal with it is really just reach out. I mean, as a friend, how much can I do? Because mm. there are certain cases as well where the partner would actually try to eliminate the friend. Yeah. So, for example, if I can yeah, use right. yourself, yeah, for example, yeah. you're going through DV, you're talking to me, your wife would make sure that you're no longer friends. Yeah. Really, yeah. So that I'm not there you to give that guidance, support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you see what I mean? That's right. Go to the person, the people that can help, the yeah. professional bodies. Yeah. And they, they can support you. Mm. You know, it, 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 it doesn't mean that you've got to stay. I, I just can't keep hammering on that. Yeah. And the more people you educate, the more people you make aware. Pakistan, for example, coming back to the point that you yeah. asked culturally. Um, yes, of course, not the same anymore. Things are changing. People are getting educated. Like, mm. internet is getting very common. Mm. People have access to Facebook. People have access to YouTube channels and stuff. So, is awareness is happening. Now, you'll see, for example, in Pakistan, before a girl would not be able to, for example, do a love marriage. It would be a very sort of taboo mm. sort of thing. Now, yeah, I mean, if anything, the most she'll do, she'll go to the police station with the mm -hmm. guy she wants to get married and they will support uh, because uh, legally yeah. there is no... So, yeah, I mean, these are the things. The more awareness and education we get out, the more people are aware, the more individuals are aware, yeah. the more the better it is for the society and for the, especially the ones that are being abused, mm -hmm. experiencing DV. Absolutely. I agree entirely. And um, just to say that the statistics here are really, really alarming. Mm. Yeah. It says there's seven women a month. You said that already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Sixty-two percent of children living in domestic abuse are directly harmed by the perpetrator. Yeah. yeah. yeah? On average, victims are at high risk of serious harm or murder, mm. in some cases. Yeah. Um, 
it's yeah. really, really so it's just not the abuse, it goes yeah. as far as murder and yeah. you know, taking somebody's life. And also 85% of victims sought help five times on average from professionals mm. in a year before they, they actually go for help. Yeah. So if you're really sort of, I don't know, if you're a lawyer, a doctor, a solicitor, you actually feel like, God, because of my status of where I am, you know, what does this mean? And sometimes, like I said, sometimes they're fearful of losing. And again, if you talk about it, mm. if you're in a very high position in a high job, and you're beating your wife left, right, and centre. Mm. Don't forget, it's a criminal offence. Mm -hmm. You could lose your job. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So be, think twice before you lay that finger or hand, as they say. Think twice. Things can be resolved by speaking or by talking to each other. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to result in violence. Well, today, it's been... I wouldn't say emotional, but there's a lot that's going on in our society that we all need to change. From the first launch, at least you, you've heard about... Um, there's a call in. coming in. Call Let me yeah. mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Hi. What's your, what's your name? Where are, you calling, where are you calling from? Uh, where is that in that lunch? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess you guys are talking about TV, isn't it? Yes. Oh. Hello? 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 We can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, the little that I want to add up is that when we talk about TV, um, it's just that now, Mm -hmm. uh, when you go down to the grassroots, most people do not know what TV is. Mm -hmm. And as you are saying, if someone will sit out there and ask them, what is TV? What is TV? Because I hear you guys using DV, DV, yeah. and I know the reason why. Because someone is asking, what is TV? Mm -hmm. So can you please let people know that DV is domestic violence? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a very fair yeah. point. Yeah, that's thank you. Yeah, that's a very, very fair point. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. You're thank welcome. You. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thanks thank for you. calling. So, I mean, just to touch up on that, I think that's a really good um, phone call yeah. that came to yeah. because because some of us know we're yeah, used to, we're used to, to using that. Yes. 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 But just to break we that do down, apologize mm -hmm. what is yeah. the meaning of domestic violence? Mm -hmm. Is probably what we're looking at, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I, I, I guess I came in halfway through the mm. program. Yeah. I'm sure you guys would have explained what that is. Yeah. And domestic violence is like obviously abuse that goes on in a home. Yeah. So we must apologise for using all these DVs. Domestic violence. Thank you for that. Well, there's another there's call coming through. Thank you, caller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Nana and I'm calling from West Village. Thanks, Nana. Yeah, hi. Right. Um, I love the, uh, the project that you guys are doing. Thank you. Right. And um, I was listening to the caller who called to explain mm. that um, how did they call the DV? Yeah. People mm. don't understand it, mm. which is quite good. And it's a fair point, as you're saying. And then again, when we look in terms of um, domestic violence, it's also contribute to um, finances. Yeah. Mm. It contribute to a whole lot because perhaps you will be with your partner or your partner, meaning wife or husband. The one is, I mean, stopping you from, from getting into your own work that you've earned mm, yeah. or into, like, for instance, joint account. So that one also you have to let people be aware of that. Mm. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much for calling. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You guys are doing a great job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Bye.
I think I think we need to break it down. We need to break it down because we've got some of the points or mm. the the things that contribute to yeah, it, domestic yeah. abuse. Yeah. So it could be name calling. Mm -hmm. Physical abuse, mm -hmm. financial abuse, we did say anger as mm. well. Even insults actually could be a form of an abuse. Yeah. Um, and the psychological impact. There's another call coming through. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'm, busy, yeah. isn't it? That's it. I'm glad yeah. there is some. Mm. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Blazard. Hi, Blazard. <laughs> How are you guys? You guys are Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. I have to stop somewhere and just to listen. You know what? Kudos to you guys there. It's a fair play. I'm really enjoying it. And this is what we need in our community to be creating such an awareness because a lot of people are going through TV and they don't even know that what they're going through is an abuse. Yeah. Because why? Our culture and our tradition accept it and it does make it to be a normal thing. Okay. So someone could be, let's say, um, or let me just let me just um, make a scenario here. You look at somebody like an Asian or an African uh, being brought up in Africa. Now, a man or a woman goes down there, get married to them, and bring them to the Western world. Then, which means that it's like you owe the person. Yes. yes. And they Very good point. To Very use good point. that to abuse you, mm -hmm. both physically, financially, emotionally sexually and all that yes mm. yes very true and that is one thing that is it's a big issue and i'm telling you in our community especially within african community we don't talk about it because the person is scared because if you go out there and you speak out probably if you are in a church mm. people will start criticizing you pointing fingers mm. at you that oh she's going to report her husband mm. yes blah, 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 blah. the husband brought her to europe she's a grateful woman but they forget that that man is abusing you at home mm. probably slapping you every night yeah some of them are even taking all the money that these women are earning so it, it, it's a broad issue it's something that is really going on and you know i'm really really excited and now um, the impact launch has come out to create this awareness and we need more of this for the women and both men as well it's mm. happening to the men as well some of the men also are being abused yes. because the women are the ones that brought them from europe uh, brought them from africa to europe yeah. probably gave them the state permit and all that and they're using that to abuse them thank you that's a fair point very good right. point yeah. thank you very much thank you. So, thank you very much and i'll see you guys soon thank, thank you for yeah. calling thank you bye bye, -bye. bye. I think it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a very, yeah. very, very good point. And do you know what? It's really interesting. The one she's talking about when people yeah. kind of go back home and yeah. get yeah. married. Yeah. It is serious. It's especially when they give them a stay. Absolutely. Because they serious. think that it's an obligation they, they have to that they slap have. you when it's okay yes. and to abuse you when yes. it's okay just because they married you and then they brought you into European yeah. country to a better life. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. And I'm sure it's going on in Africa culture because yeah. as well as it's happening as in well Asian as culture yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, mm. And uh, I've personally known, obviously won't be able to name anybody, mm. personally have known individuals, uh, male and female, they came from back home into mm. this country and uh, during the relationship that they were facing abuse and one of the obligation that the person had was yeah just because i married you and i yes sponsored you and got you over mm. i have an obligation over you i own you sort mm. of in a way that whatever i deem necessary i'll do to you and it should and will be okay which is not Terrible. absolutely Terrible. not a, back to the thing that where you draw a line where do you draw, yeah. where do you draw a where line do where do you set, settle for one is that what you were saying yeah. Yeah. How, where do you settle for one so you're saying that again there's no way it's accept, acceptable in society mm. doesn't matter what kind of favor you've done doesn't because you might it's your choice if you marry Absolutely. somebody isn't yeah. it mm. so like, if you marry somebody and you bought them over here that was your choice yeah. you could have yeah. marry somebody in uk exactly. you could have married somebody in i don't know yeah. in europe in poland or something yeah. exactly but you decided yeah. You went all out of your way, out of the country, went back home, got a wife, and then got her here. Yeah. And now you think you have the right to obviously do whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you said incorrect. something really important um, when we were talking about domestic violence earlier. I think we have to kind of have differentiation of what culture is and what mm. tradition is. is. And yeah. I think a lot of us that in the UK have got that mm. mixed up. 
Mm. You know, because sometimes somebody might be doing something. Oh, actually, that's our culture. Really? Mm. It's not our that's culture. True. It's yeah. not for. It's actually not our they culture. They play that card, yeah. but it's not. They play that card yeah. all the time. And it's like, if you're in a marriage and you want to come out, it's like, yeah. well, culturally, look, yeah. you want to be married forever, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, yeah. we have to know the difference between what is the culture, yeah. what is tradition. Yeah. So we're getting it all mixed up, mixed up, and things sure. are going on in a home that shouldn't yeah. be. Um, um, adding on to what Lizzie and, mm. and Faison said, there is somebody that I know very close to me. I'm not going to mm. mention Absolutely. any names, yeah, yeah. but she's been married for over 35 years, mm. and the husband was the one that brought her into this country, mm. and name all the abuses. For me, because I would say I'm enlightened to what mm. abuse is, yeah. so I was able to pick it, pick mm. up on it and Quick. say, actually, mm. this is not normal. Mm. And if she hadn't left the marriage, she would have been dead by now. Yeah. Because it was that bad. It mm. wasn't just the physical abuse, it was the emotional yeah. and the psychological part of it. Yeah, and now, she's a free woman. Mm. And because the man mm. think that he was the one that brought her into this country, she has to do everything that he says. Yeah. But it could have been vice yeah. versa. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know? Mm. And she left the marriage and she's happy. I'm mm. not saying that that should be the case, yeah, but yeah, obviously, yeah. if the man is not willing to change, you know, that's right. and he keeps abusing you, do you want to stay there and die? Do you know what? I'm going to add something to what my sister yeah. just said, psychologically. Yeah. The psychological effect, if you're not very careful, mm. whether a man or a woman, you mm. can actually take that to your next relationship, Yeah. if it's not dealt with, mm. which um, can have a serious impact on all the other relationships you're going to have. So, I, I can't keep going on about this. If there is domestic violence in your home, anyone who's watching, don't even contemplate. Yeah. Because it does not go away. I think twice. And as, as, if she, anybody, uh, sorry. As, as she said, it does not go <laughs> away. It, it doesn't. It stays. It stays. And if, it stays, anybody... and if, you, if they start calling your names, it will jump to something else. Yeah. If they start checking on your account, it will jump, jump to something else. Yeah. Yes, if so. they start sending you or slapping you, it will jump to something else you don't want to so um today the best lunch will come to the end of today's um domestic violence we will continue on, on the part two of this session and then we'll let you guys know as hopefully by next week to uh, three to four o'clock um hopefully our ladies will be here as ellie and then she <laughs> won't be late <laughs> and then, <laughs> sorry <laughs> thank you are you ending it now mm -hmm. okay. Oops.